guide, welcome to the awakening. How are you today? I've just got up. <laughs> Crazy life. Well, within the last few hours anyway. And today I want to talk about um, how to not actually quick, jump quickly into things that you find out. Assessing things, standing back a little bit and um, making sure that you're getting the true story and you're getting all the facts. And I, I'm really, really not very good at that. I'm very impulsive. Okay, so if we're talking about going from the dark into the light, um, I'd say that one of the things that holds me back in life is I'm impulsive. Now, being impulsive, it can hold you back. It can also get you forward because you do keep going, you do keep going and you achieve your goals and nothing stops you. But when you're impulsive to the extent that I am sometimes, you grab hold of something that someone says to you and you go gung-ho without stepping back and discerning and really, really checking out the facts a bit more, and then it can cause problems and then you can get yourself into all sorts of hot water and you know you come you basically not going to be telling people the truth the way you want them sorry <laughs> i love moving around you know me i i, I can't sit still for very long the body doesn't let me i'm i'm a bit <laughs> fidgety um anyway coming back to what i was saying taking a deep breath on i have a tendency to jump the gun and that's the darkness, okay? So the darkness is that we are being given a huge amount of information from all over. Information is coming at us, coming at us, coming at us, like um, continuously, like, you know, you just don't know what to believe anymore. Um, so what I've been tending to do with it is making sure that I can get some facts. So if someone sends me something, um, I'll go on there and I'll check it and I'll ask someone who I know and usually I can get some kind of fact to whether it's true or not and then I can put it out there on social media. But there's a tendency in me, as I explained yesterday as well, to do with trauma and wars, which I'm going to be interviewed about today, which goes all gung-ho and doesn't always check the facts. And today, it happened again. I was chatting to a new potential um, commentator, a new potential presenter whose work I love. Um, we were chatting and we got into what is really going on in the world at the moment. We got into the fact that 100,000 people are coming over into the UK on flights uh, every week and we are locked down. So it doesn't make any any sense because they're not being tested what the hell is going on if this was such a serious pandemic how come they're allowing people to come into this country without being tested so we chatted about that and there's loads of evidence my husband works at the airport he knows what terminals are open and what aren't so that's a fact okay that's a fact and it doesn't matter what you try to say it's a fact but the media is not telling us Okay, people are just taking this for granted and not understanding. But then someone told me something about insurance. Um, I'm not going to say what it was here, but I jumped on it, got really gung-ho and put it out on social media before I was, gave myself a chance to check some of the facts because he didn't send me the evidence. So I contacted my local insurance company and I asked them, is it true that people with COVID, who are dying from COVID, because that's what's been put on all the death certificates now, um, that it doesn't seem to be any other diseases for some reason? Everything is this one, which doesn't make any sense, obviously. Um, you know, I put a joke out there. A guy got rolled over by a steamroller. COVID. Okay, so we need to really use a lot of discernment and common sense here. So I didn't, um, but then I contacted my local legal and general, I had a long chat to them, I, which I recorded, 
and at some point I will put on here for all of you to hear. They admitted that they are actually paying out for anyone who passes from that condition, from Doris, the, the, the virus, using NLP, the little old lady down the road, if you understand neurolinguistic programming, I call her Doris because it takes away the fear. So they admitted that yes, they are honoring the insurance policies. And they gave me a number to actually check so people could ring up and check what's going on with your insurance policies. Now my husband's going to ring up about our life insurance and find out. And I recommend that every one of you does that. I'm going to give you the number now. I'm going to give you the number now. Okay. And I, if you are with legal and general, then please go and check this. Okay. This is the number. Number is 0370010-4080. I'll put it down below as well, okay? So if you're with Legal and General, you should ring them up and check your policies whether it covers a pandemic. Very important because when we had the AIDS uh, thing that was going around, they got out and they did not pay. They managed to use a clause to not pay insurance. So I'm doing my research and I'm bringing on someone who's doing more research of cases where they will not pay insurance if the death was COVID, which is very, very worrying because they seem to be signing everyone with it. Okay. So that's the first thing I'm saying. Check the facts. Don't jump in, attack another human being check the facts we talked about what mandatory is and how important it is to explain to your fellow man that mandatory means that every single person by the law check the facts if you don't want to impose something cruel on the person who doesn't want it then find the bit in the middle give people freedom of choice like they did with the flu vaccination and children's vaccinations, you don't have to have them if you don't want to. But when the mandatory word comes in, it makes it very, very dangerous because that removes freedom. Okay, check the facts. Now that is the darkness that we're in. The darkness is when all of this is coming up and we go gung-ho into the darkness into the confusion, into all of that information that we're getting, okay? Is, it causes us to go into fear, people start fighting, people start calling people names, and, and we get into a war too quickly. Now, wars can be prevented if you check the facts and you sit down with your fellow man who has a different opinion to you, and you decide together what is the best solution for all of us together? Not just for you, not for, just for you, but for both of us. Check the facts and come together and discuss it together. This is what we used to do in the therapeutic community. It was for the good of the community, but the good of each and every one of us. You are unique and you fit in to a community. You have a right to be unique and a free human being. This is the awakening. You have a right to say no to whatever you want. As I said, I told you the story. Buddhism tells you to stand up for yourself. I told you the story of the woman who said to, to the Buddha, she said to him, you're saying not to use violence. I'm not supposed to be violent. But what if someone comes towards me and tries to assault me or attack me or steal my bat or whatever, my, steal something from me. And the Buddha said, you take your umbrella and you whack him on the head. It wasn't their Buddha, but it was a certain mentor Buddha that they went to study with, Muji probably. You take an umbrella, you whack them on the head, and then you say, peace, my son, or peace, my child, or whatever. You protect yourself. So check the facts. And I have to be very careful. So I took it off. The message I put on, I took it off. And then I put 
the number and I said, check your own information, check the facts and any evidence that there is, I will bring it on. But the, the darkness comes into the light. The minute we are able to think logically and not go straight in, we have a more neutral kind of um, perspective. To say, I talked to a friend yesterday who has a completely different perspective than I am. Completely different, way out there. And yet we get on, we love each other, we're good friends. It doesn't matter because it doesn't affect me or him directly. But if there was something that was affecting him and his family and their life or mine and my life, and it was something that was coming up, we would sit and we had different opinions and i have got friends with different opinions to me and i respect that and i just said to them please check the facts and know what you're getting into here know what you're getting into here and this beautiful friend sent me a message back and said i don't want you to put yourself in danger and i said to him uh i I, my freedom is the most important thing to me. My freedom of choice, my health, and my choices. That's what I fight for, fight for every day. That's why I get up, and even if I don't have any energy, or I feel like crap, or I don't want to do this program, because I still don't have that many views, but I'm growing. It's kind of like, Lauren, put on your lipstick, Want a bit of makeup, sort your hair out, put on a hat. <laughs> Make sure you look 20 years, 30 years, sometimes 30 years younger. Check, and that's it. I get on here and I bring you into the light. So I come into the light. I make sure I eat so I don't get too hungry. I had a beautiful fruit salad today. I had uh, peaches and tangerines in dairy-free yogurt. Um, with um, flaxseed and nuts and oh, beautiful apricot kernels, beautiful, healthy. That's what I want. That's all I need with the sunshine at the moment. I don't need anything else. With nature and being happy, I am as well as, as can be. Except sometimes I, get, I feel low and I get overwhelmed and I can't be bothered. So I go into the dark. I have some friends contacting me and they, for some reason, they want to talk a lot about the why ifs, the fear and what ifs. And I think I can't do that anymore. I just can't do it. As you remember, I, I recovered from borderline personality disorder. Fear makes you catastrophize and makes you go all over the place. I want to be in the moment and I don't want to believe that this is it. I believe that we're in the dark, coming into the light. And hundreds of thousands of people are waking up every single day, every single week. Hundreds of thousands of people are watching out of shadows. They're watching, they're watching. Yesterday, we had a video with Mel Gibson and Robert Downey Jr., who I absolutely adored. I always loved him since he did Chaplin. I absolutely love him. And, and he came out talking about what's really going on in Hollywood. So things are coming up every single day, every single day, every single day. And you have to be careful to not stay in that space. I mean, yes, it's very easy. When you, I was listening to a woman called uh, Isher, something on Sarah, on the Sarah, oh God, I can't remember the name of the program. Um, it'll come to me, Sarah Westall, and she was talking about the mole children. Uh, makes you want to kill someone when you find out what the mole children are. Look up the mole children. They're literally born in tunnels used for experiments. They never see the light of day, and that's why they're called the mole children. Okay, look it up. Look it up. And they're starting to hopefully hopefully we pray to god to release them um, but when it, they come out it, 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 it's just going to be unbelievable what we're going to see i'm not going to go into it too much i will try and get her on there again check the facts she's a researcher she has a website to me that's enough 
but for people like John Wedger, people that are working continuously to take the darkness and bring us into the light, to show us all the darkness. You haven't got a clue, guys, what's really going on in this world. You're very innocent. I'm sorry. You have to prepare. You have to prepare yourself, okay? I'm not making this up. As I say, there are websites, and I can direct you to these websites and these people. Check the facts. Anyway, let's do positivity card. Let's do a positivity card. Let's see what we can come up to, with today. Hope you're all well. It hasn't been a huge amount of sunshine today. Well, not, well, it's evening. As I say, I've been asleep most of the day. So I was up watching programs, finding out more and more what I, people I want to interview, bringing on new hosts. Oh, card fell out. Card fell out. Now that's interesting. This is how to stay sane in a crazy world. The cards I channeled after I recovered from borderline in a therapeutic community. Um, just going to pause this. Pause. Okay. So what is the card for today? From how to stay sane in a crazy world. You can purchase these cards for me. Just email me. Moving on TV one at gmail.com. Moving on TV one at gmail.com. The key to the door. They say that when you reach 21, you have the key to the door. Today, I would like you to think about what is the key to yours? Are you living your life the way you want? Have you opened the door to your dreams? If not, well, you chose this car is because you are now an adult and it's your time to open the door to your joy and happiness. The awakening, yeah? Take your metaphorical key and open that door. I'm now ready and mature enough to open my door to the life that will bring me the joy and inspiration I want. I am now ready and mature enough to open my door to the life that will bring me the joy and inspiration I want. And there's the little key, key to the door. No, it's black, but you can see the key anyway. <laughs> I'll put it on Instagram. I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it on Instagram for you on Facebook. So you can see the key to the door, how to stay sane in a crazy world. How to stay sane in a crazy world. I call this welcome to the awakening. <laughs> but yes, we are called to stay sane in this crazy world because it is crazy. And half the time, we don't know what's going on. But that's where your awakening comes in. That is the discernment that I'm asking you to use. Use discernment, okay? I'm going to put this into the video. I just have to post it to myself. This is what I do. I take a picture, and then I JPEG it to me. Um, the whole glory. Well, send it to myself, moving on TV. <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> so I've got to send it to myself. Moving on TV. Now I'll just, uh, hang on a second. <laughs> I, I don't want to um, waste your time. You can fast forward this a little bit. I'm going to send it to... All right, let's open a different one, send it easier. Okay, so basically the picture today is the key of the door. Okay, so what does that mean to you? What does it mean to you to have the key to the door? There we go. What does it mean to you to have the key to the door? There we go. To me, it means choices. And that's what we were talking about. To me, it means, am I doing what I love? Yes or no? And if not, why am I not doing what I love? Should I be doing, should I be doing what I love? And that's why I get up every day 
whenever I get up, because we're all over the place, and I make another awakening video for you. And that's why I go out there and I try to find new hosts. And that's why I work on moving on TV and I work on the musical Encounters. And I do what I love, I eat what I love, I do what I love. And it's, I've never ever got paid to do moving on TV, ever. I think, um, I don't know, maybe once, years and years ago, someone gave me a little bit of money to do some programs, but that was it. That was in 2015, that was it. Usually everything I've done from the heart. And now I'm doing things from donations and bartering because that's how we're living. This TV station, I intend to build it up so that you can watch all these different programs. So you, if you want to watch or listening, this for me is the awakening. This is the key to the door for me to create a new TV station without violence, without sex, without horrible, horrible stuff where everyone is a star. If you're 90, if you, I don't care about your age. I don't care about your disability. I don't care what you look like. Have fun, do what I do, wear wigs, you know. <laughs> don't wear wigs, <laughs> wear colors, wear hats, wear makeup, don't wear makeup. I, you know, I really, I don't care, I mean, I've had a program on the disability show with uh, Michelle Spratt, who has ataxia. She did a program once. I might get her making programs again because I'm sure she's got very little to do at the moment. And she is an incredible woman who has never been able to get work because of her ataxia. So that's it for today, guys. Use the sermons, use common sense. Course in Miracles today tells me what does the Course in Miracles tell me today? <laughs> All that I give is given to me. So guys, I'm giving you love. I'm giving you common sense. I'm giving you discernment. I'm giving you freedom of choice. I'm giving you fun. I'm giving you joy. I'm giving you passion. I'm giving you laughter. I'm giving you hope and glory. Bringing the hope and the glory back into your lives. And so... That's it. If you want to contact me, you can contact me at movingontv1 at gmail.com 07437532798. Um, I will be sorting out Hope Glory Productions, the website that we are actually under, so you can watch programs on there. I've got to figure out how to get MP4s on there without going onto YouTube, just in case. Same way as some people that have been banned. Um, I don't think, you know, I'm not big enough yet. <laughs> anyway, it's wonderful to have you here. It's wonderful to have people watching the programs. I'm very, very grateful. Uh, if you call, are called to donate someone, to donate someone, <laughs> to donate someone to do programs, yeah, or yourself, to donate something to the channel, you know how to do it. It's on my PayPal. Moving on, um, I do put the link down below. Take care, lots of love. Have a beautiful what day, whatever day it is today. I think it's Thursday. <laughs> Lost track of the days. And just, to, just before I close, um, I have a wonderful friend. She's 94, I think. I met her in hospital when I broke my leg. She said she was born the same year as the Queen. So she must be 94. And I ring her every week at least. She's so amazing, I mean. And one of the things she said to me, which I want you to think about carrying your heart. She said, they must think we're so gullible. There you go. 94 years of age, no vaccines, won't have the flu vaccine, as healthy as a horse, lives on her own, takes care of herself.